Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to talk about the new Ableton devices that they've added in 11.1. Uh, there are three new devices that they've added, uh, Time Align, uh, MIDI Shaper, and the Shifter device. Uh, they're all three really cool and I have three sounds set up to kind of show you around and uh, show you how uh, they can be used. So let's jump right into the project and look at that. Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly say if you want to support this channel, go to my Spotify or Apple Music. There you can follow me and add some of my songs to your daily listening playlist. Thank you very much. Let's get back into the video. Uh, so here I've started with the, uh, the sound that I've um, kind of spent the most time on. The other two were done a little bit more hasty just to kind of show you uh, the particular feature of um, the particular device. But for the first one, I'm actually using all three of the new devices. So here we have Shaper MIDI, we have uh, Time Align right there, and then we have directly after that, we have the Shifter. Uh, so those are the three new devices. Let's actually quickly run you through uh, how they work. So Shaper MIDI uh, opens up like this, and it allows you to draw in a curve, any curve that you want. Uh, you can add points, you can shift click to delete them. You can hold Alt to change the curvature and um, command click for sustain mode. I don't know what that means, but uh, it's not working for me. It's just adding normal points. Uh, but it's it's a cool way to add the shape. And then you can set the time either in uh, as a rate or in milliseconds. I've set it to one over eight. And now what it does, it's triggering that shape anytime a MIDI note hits. So you can use this, for example, as an envelope. And that's how I've been using it. Um, so going into the synth, what we can see is uh, if we just look at the synth here and I play it from the part where it's actually functioning. You can see, you can see the filter cutoff is being modulated by this shape. Now the real cool thing comes in when you start playing with the depth. So you can see I've set a depth curve over here going from zero to 100%. Uh, and I've just let this play through. You can see here actually the, the shape that it's producing. Now keep in mind, I also have an offset. It would be cool if this uh, kind of window was changed so that it would be a normal automation curve just like this, because I don't think it's needed to be this big. Uh, this is more for like pitch and stuff. Um, so let's put it back on the other one so you can see what's going on. Uh, but if I play this, you can see the kind of the, the modulation that it's giving to the filter cutoff here. So it's a really cool way to kind of morph between um, just like a normal automation and uh, turning it into kind of this envelope thing. Uh, and the cool thing is that you cannot just um, assign one parameter to this. You can actually assign up to eight parameters, each with a unique start and end point. And that's what I've done both with this drive here, this gain here on the, the pedal, as well as uh, the high output gain here on the OTT. Um, so that just gives it a little bit of movement and they all follow the same curve. So they follow the same movement throughout this patch, which is really cool. And, and therefore also the, the, the same fact that it, it's opening up with that, that uh, depth parameter and that offset parameter uh, changing over time and stuff like that. Uh, so that's the first device. This is basically there to, for MIDI notes, give you kind of a control value that you can use to modulate parameters. That's really cool. And um, there's some really creative ways you can use this to kind of change up the automation a bit. Uh, the second one that I want to look at is this time align. Now here, I've used it very simply to just give me a Haas effect. So the way this time align works is that you can set different values for the time and it will delay either the left or the right channel by that amount of time or both which is not what we want in this case. In this case, we want 10 milliseconds. Uh, you can also set amounts in samples, up to 200 samples, which is about uh, four milliseconds there. If you want really precise values, then you can use that. Or you can set a distance, which is longer, as you can see. You can set that in meters, and it also influences based on the temperature that you set, because the temperature has influence on the speed of sound, and that's what this is modeled after. So this is 
uh, useful for example if you're doing live recordings and you have two microphones that you want to align you can set for each the distance from uh, the instrument that you're recording and then it should align the, the recordings if you start recording at the same time so that's actually the original purpose of this device is to align different recordings together from the same instrument if you're using multiple um, microphones to record the same instrument it's an easy way to align them especially using the distance here finally let's talk about the shifter uh, now this is a pitch shifter or frequency shifter or a ring modulator you can set the three different modes here uh, so this is replacing the frequency shifter that was the original device in here you can see it's no longer there uh, so this instead uh, takes that job if you set it to here you have the, the same controls again uh, but here you have uh, a pitch shifter as well now so we have a native pitch shifter within Ableton which is really cool uh, what I've been doing up until now mainly is use the kilohertz pitch shifter uh, this one here uh, but now I'm definitely switching over to the, the shifter that's in here because this one does sound a bit better on uh, for example this acid lead where I have it now uh, so here what I'm doing with it is I'm just getting that octave higher sound and uh, making it a lot more stereo using that Haas effect that we have set up. Uh, so the original was this with a Haas effect setup and this is just taking stereo. Uh, so as you can see here we're taking out all of the mid frequencies. So this is just like a stereo layer on top of it. I'm looking for that kind of gritty mid-range here and uh, just tuning it up an octave with this particular shifter sounds really, really cool. Uh, so that's what I've been using it for. If we want to hear the original with and without, it sounds like this. Just makes it a bit grittier, a bit more distorted uh, and the higher mid-range also sounds a lot nicer to me. Uh, so that's where this is really useful. Now let's go into the next sound. And uh, here what I've found is that uh, with the time align, there's this really cool thing you can do. Because uh, it's almost like it, it gives a little bit of a delay effect. So here we have a normal impact sound, which I created from a kick, some EQ and a reverb. Something that you might use at the end of a drop to kind of go into the break or something like that. Nice big impact. Uh, but it's a little bit boring, it's a little bit vanilla. And what I've done here is I've created this rack. Uh, so here we have just the dry output. And then at the same volume we have uh, at a very high distance, so about 100 milliseconds here, which translates to this 38 meters at 20 degrees Celsius, uh, which doesn't really matter uh, for now. But you can see uh, we're using a fairly high volume to kind of uh, play the sound again a little bit later. So. If you zoom in on the timeline, you can see where about that would be. It would start to play it right about here. So we would have another kick kind of layered in here. Now this is really cool because for example, you can add effects before this, right? Normally in the timeline, you can maybe duplicate the track, group the two tracks and then add an effect on top of that. What you can do now is you can add effects before it. Uh, so that just is a little bit more creative, allows you to do a little bit more things. Uh, so what I've done here is uh, just to differentiate between the two, I have added an overdrive and a reverb. Uh, and now the uh, impact sounds like this. There's this cool little wobble kind of effect uh, to it, uh, which might just be uh, an artifact of how this particular device works. Uh, I do really like how it sounds, so uh, this is definitely where I will be using it is to create some more interest in, uh, for example, uh, my impact sounds. Finally, I want to show you how you can use the shifter device to do uh, vibrato and tuning uh, of particular samples. Uh, so here I have a sample in A sharp and it sounds like this. cool little high-end atmosphere. Uh, now let's say that I want to tune this from A sharp to F sharp, uh, and I want to tune it an octave higher instead of an octave lower, because uh, the closest F sharp is actually four semitones below, uh, but then if you go up an octave, you go eight semitones above. So here you can see I've set it to eight semitones, and therefore now we have tuned this sample to F sharp, but an octave higher than the original. 
also I've added this LFO. Now this LFO is mapped to this fine tuning here. And throughout this depth, what we can do is we can set a tremolo here. Uh, so with the LFO as well and the tuning, uh, as well as some filter action here, just to open up the filter uh, at the rising part, we now have a completely different kind of sound and it sounds like this. So now we have a cool way to transform this sample into a new sample and uh, it obviously tunes it, but it also adds the vibrato effect. Uh, now, if you just want the vibrato effect, you obviously don't have to tune it. You can just use it for that kind of vibrato thing here. So then it sounds like this. Which also makes it sound really, really cool. Um, so overall cool creative effect and there's a lot more that you can do with it obviously as I said there's also a frequency uh, shifter that uh, frequency shift things and then there's a ring modulator So there's a lot of creative stuff that you can do with this effect and uh, I'll be looking forward to playing with this uh, even more. I hope this basic rundown of the effects gives you kind of the creativity. I didn't want to dive in and explain every parameter because uh, I wanted to kind of set you up so that you can explore the devices yourself and see what you can make with it yourself. I hope I have been able to give you uh, three cool creative ideas to use these devices. And uh, if you did like this video, leave a like. If you're new here, subscribe. Uh, so next time there's another cool device or cool trick in Ableton uh, that I find, then you'll be able to see it instantly. Uh, but that's the video for today. Again, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.